making good wines. These are not, you know, wines that you're going to store and sell for years, but they're approachable for everybody. You know, rock and roll, wine, they're the same demographics nowadays. nowadays. As with the strum of this electric guitar and the bang of a big bass drum within a rock anthem melody, this sexy wine strokes balance and resonates with flavors of cherries, raspberries, etc. So it's always this like tie in between sort of sexiness and bombast and then like our wine, you know? <laughs> But that's what rock and roll is. It is, it is. But is it what wine is? I argue that, you know, you can't really pair a wine just to the band. You have to do it to where they were at that point in their career. At one point in their career, they were more approachable, and then over time, maybe they get more sophisticated. Context is everything for, for a rock band, right? I mean, I could play you songs without letting you know who they were, and you'd be like, oh, I kind of like that. But then you'd find out it was like Nickelback. And you'd right. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, my God. You know? <laughs> just like people who drink Char who say they can't stand Chardonnay, and then they drink white burgundy, and it's like, exactly. And you tell them it's Chardonnay, and they say, what? what? If I had a nickel for every time I've said that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or you had the nickel back. <laughs> so, I gotta be honest, one thing I've learned from today is that wine can actually pair with hard rock. Shiraz goes good with hard rock. Pinot goes with, yeah. with hard rock. Drake came out with the song a couple years ago and mentioned Moscato, and it became Huge. Oh. Just another thing to blame Drake for. I know. <laughs> you were talking earlier about pairing wines with styles of music, which I thought was fascinating. James Blunt, <laughs> uh, an overly oaked Chardonnay. Exactly. <laughs> Where do you go with like a Kesha? <laughs> Jack Daniels, duh. <Yeah. laughs>